Bearings are defined as the devices that are used to bear load and allow the movement or power transmission in any kind of mechanical machine. So bearings are very important part of the mechanical machines. So here in this video, I would like to talk about the types of bearings and how we can select bearings, on what basis we can select base bearings. Regarding the types of bearings, actually there are four types of bearings as you can see here. The fluid film bearings which can be based on oil or gas. So here in this types of bearing, the coefficient of friction is reduced by having a fluid film in between two surfaces. So that is the basis of the, the bearing here. The another type of bearing can be dry bearing. These types of bearings are based on solid lubrication. So that means the material themselves give low coefficient of friction and therefore they can run dry. Semi lubricated bearings, many of the solids actually will not give us low coefficient of friction, especially the structural materials, the materials which can bear load. Usually they will give us high coefficient of friction, but some materials for example, brass can be used with lightly lubricated conditions. So for example, very little uh, lubrication can be good enough for these kind of bearings. The fourth type are the rolling element bearing. As we know that rolling friction is far smaller than sliding friction. So all these three actually are based on the sliding components. Whereas this one, the rolling element bearing is based on rolling elements. That means there are two types, ball bearings or roller bearings. So if we have a ball between two surfaces and the two surfaces are in relative motion, then rolling of the ball will basically lead to very low coefficient of friction, or we can also use rollers instead of balls. In the case of fluid film bearings, there are mainly four types. The journal bearing for radial loading, the thrust bearing for axial loading, squeeze film and hydrostatic fluid film bearings. So these are the main four types in the fluid film bearings. Now we can let us consider the merits over roller rolling element bearing. So merits of fluid film bearing. So what are the advantages of fluid film bearings? over rolling element bearings. So one of the greatest advantage of fluid film bearings is unlimited fatigue life. That means the fluid film bearings works on the principle that there will be a fluid film between the two surfaces. Therefore, their life can be unlimited. As long as we can run them with fluid film in between, their life can be unlimited. So there is no problem of fatigue life, which we experience in the case of rolling element bearings. Minimum space requirements, because here basically what we need is a thin film of lubricant between the shaft and the bearing. So therefore the space requirement is, is very minimum. Good damping. So the lubricant between the two surfaces not only provides good lubrication, but it also gives a damping property. That means any kind of vibration can be absorbed in the liquid. And therefore, the noise is low because there is no rolling element as in the case of rolling element bearings. The noise is very, very low. And because they, they, they are not very complex, their cost is also very low. Now, considering the rolling element bearing, the advantages of rolling elements bearing over the fluid film bearing generally low starting friction. So this is a very big advantage because in many machines, the starting friction can be very high and that is the case with fluid film bearings, but rolling element bearing can give us very low starting friction, can support radial and axial loads. So it can, one bearing can be used for both radial and axial loading. It can withstand lubricant starvation. So if there is less of lubricant 
then it's not a big problem because here the friction coefficient is very very low because of the rolling element so therefore lubricant starvation is not a big problem this is free from low temperature starting issue so generally low temperature becomes a problem for fluid film bearing because at low temperature the viscosity of the liquid is very high but this is not a problem for rolling element bearing because here the low coefficient of friction is achieved by the balls or the rollers rolling no need to re-lubricate or lubricant and lubricant is well sealed inside so this is another advantage because in the case of fluid film bearing we always need a good supply of the lubricant whereas in the case of rolling element bearing some lubrication is good enough and the lubricant can be sealed inside the the bearing so it is also a clean form of lubrication or bearing so these are the advantages uh, and disadvantages of fluid film bearings and the rolling element bearings which are the the major proportion of bearings are these two types now here we have a table where we have compared the fluid film bearings the dry bearings partial or star bearings and the rolling element bearings for different parameters so for start start of friction coefficient the fluid film bearing generally gives high friction 0.25 because of the boundary lubrication the other types of bearings will also give high friction but rolling element bearing gives very low coefficient of friction 0.002 so this is a great advantage for rolling element bearing because start of friction coefficient is extremely low the running coefficient of friction is low for the fluid film bearing 00 0.001 so this is because of the hydrodynamic lubrication so once the hydrodynamic lubrication is achieved we can have very low coefficient of friction the dry bearings and the uh, will give us still high coefficient of friction partially lubricated can can give low coefficient of friction 0.005 and the rolling element bearing also gives very low coefficient of friction 0.001 the velocity limit the fluid film bearings can run at very very extremely high speed so this is one advantage with fluid film bearing the dry bearings generally low because of the thermal frictional heating which is a big problem similarly partially lubricated or star bearings also have low velocity limit and the rolling element bearings have medium kind of velocity limit the load limit fluid film bearings can take very high load so this is another good advantage of fluid film bearings whereas other bearings like dry bearing and partially lubricated have low load limit and rolling elements bearings have also high load limits so it can take high loads life limits the fluid film bearings have unlimited life as long as we can run them in hydrodynamic lubrication and we maintain a good quality of lubrication the dry bearing and the partially lubricated star bearings they they have low life because of the wear issues and rolling element bearing bearings have low life because of the fatigue issue so actually the bearing will fail because of the fatigue lubrication needs high fluid film bearings have high need of lubrication whether it is liquid or gas dry bearing do not run on lubrication partially lubricated very low or none and rolling element bearings also have low need of lubrication the high temperature issue or limit so fluid film bearings have lubrication inside them so high temperature application will be limited by the lubricants so generally they cannot be used for very high temperature application the dry bearings can be used at high temperature it is basically materials limited so if we select high temperature solid lubrication then we can use at high temperature for example mos2 which is a high temperature lubricant or even graphite can be used this partially lubricated also is lubricant limited and rolling element bearing also 
does use some lubrication like grease, so they are also limited in high temperature application. Low temperature limits, so again this is also lubricant limited because at low temperature the viscosity of the lubricant will be very high and therefore it will be hard to achieve hydrodynamic lubrication. There is no lubrication issue here in the dry bearing and partially lubricated also does not have very um, big issue with low temperature limit. And rolling element bearings also have problem with the lubricant limitation because grease or any kind of oil will have very high viscosity and therefore there is some lim limitation. The vacuum application, so fluid film bearings cannot be used in vacuum because the liquids will evaporate. The dry bearings are very excellent for vacuum application. So here we can use solid lubrication and they are fine in vacuum conditions. Partially lubricated, again are lubricant limited and rolling element bearings also are lubricant limited for vacuum application. So for vacuum ap application, the dry, dry bearings are the, the, the most useful. In terms of noise production, fluid film bearings have low noise production, the dry bearings and partially lubricated have medium, whereas the rolling element bearings have very high production of noise. So it is important to control the noise in rolling element bearings. Dirt and dust problem, uh, fluid film bearings need seals. In the case of dry bearings, it can tolerate some dust and dirt and partially lubricated also fairly fine with uh, dirt and dust, but they also need some cleanliness. And in the case of rolling element bearing, they also need seals because any introduction of dust or dirt inside the rolling element bearing can be very disastrous for the bearing. Radial space need, this fluid film bearings do not need much space because all we have here is a thin film of the lubricant. Similarly, for dry bearing and partially lubricated also we do not need much space, but for rolling element bearings we need large space. So this is one very big limitation for rolling element bearings. Damping capacity, um, so the fluid film bearings have good damping property, so it is high. These two have quite low because there is not much liquid inside and only liquid can provide damping property. In the rolling element bearing, it is a medium kind because here grease or any kind of oil inside the lubricant will provide some damping property. In terms of cost, the fluid film bearings can be high cost because of the maintenance of the lubricant and lubricant supply. Dry bearing is very low, partially lubricated also very low in terms of cost and the rolling element bearings have medium kind of cost. So this is the analysis of for different parameters for these four types of bearing. So any selection has to consider all these aspects before we make a final decision. Now this chart which was given by engineering science data unit can be used to select what kind of bearing we should use for a, diff for a set of velocity and maximum load. So here we have got all these four types of bearings. So rubbing bearings are basically the dry bearings, oil impregnated, um, porous metal bearings are the starved or lightly lubricated bearings, rolling element bearings and hydrodynamic oil film bearings. So these are the four types just we have discussed and the rubbing bearings are these are the lines which indicate the limits of the use of rubbing bearings. The oil impregnated are these lines, these long dots. The rolling element bearings are these solid, solid lines and the hydrodynamic oil film bearings are the these lines, these chain lines. And these lines represent the limits of these bearings. That means we cannot use these bearings beyond these limits. Now, these numbers are shaft diameter. 
So the diameter of the shaft in meter or in inch. So it is given here. So now if we talk about a frequency of rotation of RPM of 1000 for example. So we draw a vertical line here and for as we increase the load. So if the speed or rotation is fixed then as we increase the speed uh, as we increase the maximum load. So for lower loads we can use the rubbing bearing or solid bearings. That means no lubrication is needed. But as we increase the load we need partial lubrication and further on we will need the rolling element bearing. So these lines are for rolling element bearing and also it indicates you the shaft diameter. So as we increase the load the shaft diameter has to be increased. So it starts so for this kind of load for this kind of load about 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 2 Newton we can use a rolling element bearing of shaft diameter 0.006 meter. But if the load is increased then we need to increase the shaft diameter accordingly. And this is how we can choose. But if the load, the maximum load can increases beyond this point, then actually the rolling element bearing cannot be used anymore because this is the limit of the rolling element bearing. So at much higher load, we have to use the hydrodynamic oil film bearings or fluid film bearings. So this is how we can decide that for a given RPM and for any kind of load, how we should select, what kind of bearing we should select. So this is a very good guide for selecting the type of bearing out of those four types, we can select which, what kind of bearings we can use for our application. So for light loads, we can use the rubbing bearings or solid lubrication bearings. But as we increase the load for a given rotational speed, we need to use the lubrication, the rolling element bearing or the hydrodynamic oil film bearings. Now if we look at in another way, for example, if the load is fixed and we are increasing the rotational speed or the RPM, then here we can see that at lower RPM, we can manage with these dry lubrication, dry bearings or rubbing bearings. But as we increase the rotational speed, we have to use rolling element bearing of these diameters or we have to move to journal bearing or hydrodynamic oil film bearing. Again, journal bearing also has got some limits that beyond this kind of load and speed, we cannot use the journal bearing because of the problem with the, the shaft burst limit. So there is a maximum limit that we can use these journal bearings up to. So this map gives us a very good guide of how we can select the type of bearing if we are given with the, the rotational speed RPM and the maximum load. And after having selected based on the mechanical needs, we should also look at another two aspects. First one is the environment and the second one is the cost. So environment because we must look at what under what kind of environment this, lubric, this bearing will be working on. So for example, the environment can be high temperature or the environment can be vacuum or it can be corrosive environments. So accordingly, we should use select the bearings. So for example, if it is a vacuum environment, then we cannot use the oil lubricated uh, bearings, then we have to go for rubbing bearings or sliding bearings. Similarly, if it is a corrosive environment, again, metals may have some problems. So in that case, we should use plastics or with some coatings. For high temperature application, again, we should use rubbing bearings, not the lubricated bearings.
So depending on the environment, we have to select finally what kind of bedding we should use. And then the third factor is the cost because cost is always an issue. So if the cost is too much for certain bearing, then we might have to reduce the cost. So for example, if at some condition, if both rolling element bearings and rubbing element, uh, rubbing bearings can be used, then since the rubbing bearings have low cost, we should go for rubbing bearings, not the rolling element bearings. So in any kind of exercise for bearing selection, we should first look at the mechanical requirements and the performance, which we can assess by this map. Then we should look at the environment and lastly, we should look at the cost. So finally, I would like to summarize. The bearings are of mainly four types, fluid film bearings, dry bearings, semi-lubricated bearings, and rolling element bearings. The selection of bearings is based on the mechanical requirements, environmental requirements, and cost. Mechanical requirements and performance are the first considerations. The engineering science data map provides a good estimate in selecting the type of bearings that could be used for a given bearing load and bearing speed. Finally, the environmental requirements such as corrosive environment, temperature, vacuum condition, etc. should be considered along with the cost. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any question or comment, please write them down below in the comment section.